This is the Hoff Time Report with Idaho Freedom Foundation President Wayne Hoffman, one of Idaho's most respected, influential public policy voices. Welcome back to the program. And yes, 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 the Idaho legislative session is over. Thank you. And I'm wearing casual clothes again. But the fight to fix what's gone wrong with the government education system, that's not done. That work is just getting warmed up. Right away, the State Board of Education needs to get its house in order. As I've mentioned before, the board is responsible for having added to the state teacher certification standards a requirement that says educators need to rely on so-called culturally responsive teaching. This is just another example of critical race theory being put into practice in our state's K-12 education system. The board should vote this summer to eliminate that requirement. The board and the State Department of Education also have joint oversight over a teacher certification system that requires our teachers to promote social justice. This is something that should be stricken from the state's teacher certification program. Teachers in Idaho should not be threatened with the loss of their jobs if they decide not to indoctrinate school kids. How simple is that? It just shouldn't be happening here. The State Board of Education also needs to make sure that the higher education system actually responds to lawmakers' demands relative to the social justice spending. We know what's going on. I hope that the legislature would cut more, but they voted to cut $2.5 million from Idaho's colleges and universities. This is money that had been earmarked for social justice programs. So there's an expectation in the legislature that Boise State University, the University of Idaho, Idaho State University and Lewis Clark State College will actually make changes to their systems that get their schools back on to their core missions and away from promoting elective activism on their college campuses. Two and a half million dollars. How will the schools apply those cuts? Will they get rid of programs that discriminate against students based on race or gender? I think the State Board of Education should play an integral role in those discussions. The board should also hold accountable the presidents of the state's colleges and universities. Now, that's chiefly Boise State President Marlene Trump and the University of Idaho's President C. Scott Green. Both have allowed grotesque behavior to go unchecked on their campuses, and that must stop. Now, let's talk about Governor Brad Little. Governor Little appoints members to the State Board of Education. He needs to make it clear that he wants the board to be proactive. Little has not been terribly involved in the discussion of the indoctrination taking place on our public school campuses or in our college and university system. And while he grudgingly signed House Bill 377, which is supposed to protect students, protect them by preventing them from being forced to adhere to critical race theory, Little has not been called to do or say much more than that. But now he's going to have to. What the State Board of Education does or does not do going forward will be a reflection on the governor's leadership. And while so far we've discussed pre-kindergarten, the K-12 through education system, and Idaho's four-year schools, almost nothing has been said about the activities on our community college campuses, our two-year schools. We know those schools have also been used to advance a social justice agenda that divides students into victims. Yep, victims over here, oppressors over here, based on race, gender, and sexual orientation, and that's something that also needs further investigation. Finally, the governor's office, the State Board of Education, the superintendent of public instruction, Sherry Ibarra, they need to help Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan with her effort to investigate the left disindoctrination in our schools. McGeehan has a monumental task ahead of her 
with her new task force. But the task force work is very important and it is deserving of full support from the superintendent and the governor on down to our local school districts. The good news in all of this is that Idaho is now thankfully leading the way on education and the use of our institutions to brainwash young people. And it's because of some great work done during the last legislative session that other states are looking to Idaho for a path forward on education. So let's savor the victories, but the work continues this summer and fall. This is no time to let up. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, get notifications, share this video with your friends, and we'll talk to you again next time. You've been listening to the Hoff Time Report with Wayne Hoffman. Be sure to visit IdahoFreedom.org for Wayne's articles, IFF research, and show notes from today's episode.